Hello and welcome to Current News. My name is Neil. In this special segment, we will discuss news which is important from the perspective of your exam. The bulletin of the last whole week which might echo in the question paper in your examination hall. Let's begin with the headlines. India's ballistic missile fell in Mia Chennu, Pakistan. The missile test was conducted in Sirsa, Haryana. India cited technical fault as the incident's main reason. Western camp mobilizes against Russia amid the war. Western countries announced to end permanent normal trade relations with Russia. Russian economy likely to suffer heavy losses. Employees to get less interest on their retirement savings. EPFO reduces rate of interest on returns. It is the biggest drop in interest rate in past four decades. Government's comprehensive scheme for river rejuvenation released government to spend 19,000 crores on 13 major rivers of India, carbon emission to be curbed by afforestation. And latest CIPRI report on worldwide arms trade released, it mentions major decline in arms import from Russia to India. India is a leading arms importer of the world. Now let's begin with news of the week. A strange incident was witnessed recently. A missile was test fired from Sirsa in Haryana. Later on, the missile misfired and it accidentally fell in Mia Channu, Pakistan. This area is about 100 kilometers away from the international border between the two countries. India has stated that the missile misfired due to technical glitches. However, it is still not clear that what kind of missile it was. After the incident, it becomes necessary to know whether both the countries follow any kind of protocol for conducting the missile tests. It becomes even more crucial because both the countries are nuclear powers and the relations between the two countries have always remained tensed. An agreement was signed between India and Pakistan in 2005 for conducting the ballistic missile tests. Under the pre-notification of flight testing of ballistic missiles agreement, each country must provide the other an advance notification of three days on the test it intends to take. The agreement further states that whichever country conducts the missile test will issue an OTAM that is Notice to Air Missions or NAVERA that is Navigational Warning Notice to the other country. The purpose of this notice is to alert the pilots and seafarers. As per the agreement, the testing country will also have to ensure that the launch site should be outside 40 kilometers radius from the border or the LOC. It should be kept in mind that the impact area of the testing should be outside 75 km radius from the border. Also, the testing country will have to ensure that the testing range should at least be 40 km away from the border. The US President Joe Biden has announced that the US along with other members of G7 will terminate permanent normal trade relations with Russia. It will provide the US with an opportunity to impose heavy tariffs on most of the Russian goods. It covers major Russian items like seafood and diamonds. It has also been stated that other items would be added to this list. It is expected that this move of the US along with the G7 will cause huge damages for the Russian economy. This move by the US is aimed at penalizing Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. The G7 was established in 1975. The G7 includes UK, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan and the US. The status of permanent normal trade relations is a legal designation in the United States for free trade with a foreign nation. It is a form of Most Favored Nation or MFN. In the United States, the name was changed from the Most Favored Nation to Permanent Normal Trade Relations in 1998. Most Favored Nation status means that two countries trade with each other on easy terms such as low tariffs, minimum restrictions, allowing maximum possible imports, etc. The provision of most favored nation is based on WTO's GATT Agreement 1994. Russia has alleged that Ukraine is making biological weapons and after Russia's allegation, India has expressed its concern in this regard in the United Nations Security Council. India has also called for a ban on all categories of weapons of mass destruction as well as full and effective implementation of BTWC that is Biological and Toxic Weapons Convention. Russia has claimed that biological weapons are being made in Ukraine's laboratories with the US support. 
biological weapons spread infectious disease causing organisms or toxins which can cause serious harms to humans and plants however russia's claim has neither been confirmed nor any evidence related to it has come to the fore on this issue the us has stated that russia's allegation is completely baseless and russia is spreading false rumors to justify its actions in ukraine nevertheless the biological and toxic weapons convention is being widely discussed these days due to these allegations india has also stated that any matter relating to the convention should be addressed through its provisions and with mutual consultation and cooperation between parties concerned also india has called upon all member states of united nations to abide by the principles of united nations charter and international laws the biological toxic weapons convention 1972 is a multilateral treaty that came into force in 1975 the convention prohibits the development production acquisition transfer storage and use of biological weapons at present 183 countries are party to this treaty EPFO that is employees provident fund organization has recently reduced interest rate on provident fund deposits while the interest rate was 8.5% for 2021 it has been reduced to 8.1% for 2122 it is noteworthy that this interest rate is the lowest in the past 4 decades almost the same interest rate was also fixed in 1977-78 at present the decision of EPFO will have a direct impact on the retirement savings of the workers that is the return on these savings will now be less than before after analyzing track record of this interest rate it has been found that the interest rate has neither continuously increased nor decreased since 1975 it increased continuously from 1980-81 to 89-90 after this period the interest rate remained at 12% till 1999 and 2000 this graph quite clearly reflects that from 1977-78 till now the interest rate has never been less than 8.25% epfo is the largest retirement fund and second largest non banking financial institution of india as per the rules epf account is mandatory for employees earning up to 15000 rupees however epf account is mandatory for only those employees who work in a company which has more than 20 workers 12% of basic pay and dns allowance of the employee is deducted as a contribution for this account the same amount has to be contributed in the employee's account by the employer as well the reserve bank of india has recently conducted a 5 billion dollar rupee swap auction the auction is a part of rbi's liquidity management initiative as a result of rbi's dollar rupee swap auction the flow of dollar in the financial system will increase while the liquidity of rupee will decrease rbi's move will aid in controlling inflation to some extent and also increasing the value of rupee it has been observed from the recent trends that the foreign portfolio investors are withdrawing money from india which has directly affected the value of rupee so far about 34000 crore rupees have been withdrawn from indian stock market in such a situation there has been some improvement in the value of rupee after the swap auction the liquidity management initiative is a part of rbi's monetary policy under this initiative the liquidity of rupee in the market is controlled it means that the tool of rbi plays a pivotal role in controlling inflation dollar rupee swap or swap arrangement is a foreign exchange tool in dollar rupee swap a bank purchases us dollars from the rbi for a specified period and it also agrees to sell the same amount of us dollars after the period expires other tools used by rbi for controlling inflation include repo rate reverse repo rate and marginal standing facility etc The Startup Investment Festival 2022 an event related to northeastern region has been concluded recently. The event was organized by Northeastern Development Finance Corporation Limited. The objective of the event is to boost the startup ecosystem in the northeastern region and to provide new entrepreneurs with more facilities for expanding their business. The event will provide an opportunity to local entrepreneurs for sharing their business ideas. At the same time, it will also provide a platform for raising capital investments. for scaling up businesses the government has also set up northeast venture fund for carrying out development work in the northeastern region it was launched in 2017 with a corpus of 100 crore rupees northeastern development finance corporation limited played a pivotal role in its formation however the ministry of development of northeastern region and sidbi have also played imperative roles in setting up this fund so far about 35 projects have been approved through northeast venture fund 
These projects are related to areas such as healthcare, agriculture and allied agriculture, tourism, food processing, IT, etc. The government has been consistently making efforts towards the conservation of rivers. For this purpose, the government has recently approved a plan of Rs 19,000 crores. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and the Ministry of Jal Shakti have confirmed the launch of this plan through a joint press conference. At present, the conservation of water and environment remain a serious issue, therefore it becomes necessary to safeguard them. The plan includes provisions for planting trees along the banks of 13 major rivers and area-specific remedial measures such as soil moisture conservation. Medicinal plants, biofuel plants, fruit-bearing plants, grasses and shrubs will be planted through the use of GIS technology. The plan covers North Indian rivers like Jhelum, Chenab, Ravi, Vyas, Satluj, Luni, Yamuna and Brahmaputra as well as South Indian rivers like Narmada, Godavari, Mahanadi, Krishna and Kaveri. The project will be funded by National Afforestation and Eco-Development Board, an organization under the Ministry of Environment. In addition, the project will be monitored by the Indian Council of Forestry Research and Education, Dehradun. The program is likely to increase the forest area by 7417.36 square kilometers due to tree plantation along the river banks. Also, it will help in reducing the CO2 emissions. The geographical area of the plants to be planted along the river will cover around 58% of the total geographical area. The plan is likely to increase the groundwater level, reduce siltation of rivers, and provide employment to about 344 million people. Apart from this, the plan would also help in creating a carbon sink equivalent to about 3 billion tons of CO2 by 2030, reclaiming about 26 million hectares of degraded or barren land and conserving biodiversity. CPRI, that is the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, has released its latest report on arms trade amidst the Russia-Ukraine war. As per the report, there has been a sharp decline in the percentage of weapons imported by India from Russia. It would be pertinent to mention here that India has been procuring maximum weapons from Russia so far. From 2012 to 2017, India procured 69% of its total weapons from Russia and this figure came down to 46% in 2021. It is also mentioned in the report that the decrease which is being witnessed in India's arm imports is because at present India has prioritized other options to meet its arms requirements. The procurements of arms from France is a major issue in this regard. Apart from this, India's total arms imports declined by 21% between 2012-16 and 2017-21 due to the slow and complicated procurement process and supplier level changes. Globally, Russia's arm exports declined by 26% between 2012-16 and 2017-21. With this decline, Russia's share in global arms export has come down to 19% from 24%. This is because India and Vietnam have reduced arms imports from Russia. From 2017 to 2021, Russia exported maximum weapons to only four countries, namely India, China, Egypt and Algeria. China and Egypt have increased arm imports from Russia. Major imported weapons include air defense systems and fighter aircrafts. CIPRI has identified 163 major arm importing countries, out of which the top five arm importing countries are India, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Australia and China. These five countries jointly account for 38% of the world's total arm imports. Russia has been carrying out horrific attacks in different cities of Ukraine since Feb 2022. Some cultural cities of Ukraine have also suffered heavy damages in these attacks. Hence, now the UNESCO has taken up the initiative of protecting the ancient heritage sites amid the ongoing war. UNESCO will try to protect the ancient heritage sites including St. Sophia's Cathedral which is located in Kyiv, the capital city of Ukraine. To do the needful, UNESCO has decided to bring these heritage sites under the Blue Shield Emblem of 1954 Hague Convention. The 1954 Hague Convention was adopted for protection of cultural properties during armed conflicts. The convention has been the first and the most comprehensive treaty dedicated to protection of cultural heritage in times of peace as well as during an armed conflict. Monuments, art and history, archaeological sites, manuscripts and scientific collections etc. have been kept within the ambit of the convention. India is a party to this convention. Amidst the ongoing war, this convention has been implemented as both Russia and Ukraine are its members. The Blue Shield is officially known as International Committee of the Blue Shield. The Blue Shield was established in 1996. It is a non-governmental and non-profit organization. The Blue Shield is basically a network of committees which work for the protection of cultural heritage sites 
even during disasters. The blue shield is the cultural equivalent of Red Cross. Union Minister Shri Prahlad Joshi in reply to a question in Rajya Sabha has informed about the new steps taken by the government for meeting coal requirements domestically. First of all, we should know about the present status of coal supply in India. It is a fact that India's domestic sector is not able to meet its country's coal requirements. The actual demand for coal during 2021 was 906.13 million tons. Out of the total actual demand, the share of imported coal was 215.15 million tons, while the share of domestic coal supply was only 690.88 million tons. However, at present, coal production has increased at the domestic level. The government has taken several initiatives in this direction. As a first step, commercial auction of coal is to be held on revenue share basis. This process was started in 2020. The second step involves selling excess coal production. Ministry of Coal has permitted sale of additional coal by captive leases up to 50% of the total coal produced in a financial year for this purpose. The government has also amended the Mineral Concession Rules 1960 for implementing this provision. The provision's best part is that it has been provisioned for the public sector captive mines as well as the private sector mines. In addition, rolling auction process is to be carried out for speeding up the coal auction process. It is noteworthy that under rolling auction process, once the auction process is completed, the mines which have not received any bid or any one bid in the previous auction have to be included in the auction process again. Besides, an opportunity has to be provided to new mines identified by the Ministry of Coal. Besides, the government has launched single window clearance portal. It is expected to accelerate the coal mine operations. Coal India Limited has also set a target of producing 1 billion tons of coal from its mines. Mission Coking Coal has also been launched by the government. It aims at increasing coking coal production from 45 million tons to 140 million tons by 2029-30. Let us now look at the five questions based on the bulletin. Questions for this series are First question is Consider the following statements with reference to CIPRI's latest report. 1. Russia's share in arms imports to India has increased continuously in the last five years. 2. India is the fifth largest arms importer in the world. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. Next question is, prominently in news the term blue shield is related to peacekeeping forces in sub-Saharan Africa, a protocol for establishing peace between Eastern European countries, protecting cultural heritage sites amid armed conflicts or none of the above. Next question is, Employees Provident Fund Organization recently reduced the interest rate on saving returns. What are the decisions likely implications? Employees will be motivated to contribute more to their EPF accounts or it will help the employees to strike a balance with the inflationary situation or the amount available for investment with the employees provident fund organization will increase or all of the above. Next question is consider the following statements. 1. It is a treaty between India and Pakistan for conducting ballistic missile tests. 2. The treaty is applicable only on conducting surface-to-surface -surface missiles tests. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. Last question is, consider the following statements. 1. The Biological and Toxin Weapons Convention is a multilateral treaty which was enforced in 1975. 2. The Convention prohibits storage and usage of chemicals. Which of the above statement or statements is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. So for the time being, that's all in this bulletin. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe this TIS Hindi, English and PCS YouTube channels. At the end, let us have a look at few more events of the last week in other news. 
Telangana has become the first Indian state to record its crop diversification pattern as an index. Crop diversification index is a base value which represents the percentage of total cultivated area fixed for a crop. A higher index value indicates that the crops are more diverse. Mumbai Climate Action Plan prepared by the Brihan Mumbai Municipal Corporation was released recently. World Resources Institute India and C40, a network of cities, provided technical assistance to BMC for preparing the plan. A 30-year roadmap has been prepared for Mumbai for dealing with climate change-related challenges. It has fixed short, medium and long-term climate targets for achieving net zero emissions target by 2050. Gujarat government has recently unveiled a new sports policy 2022 to 27. This sports policy is aimed at transforming the sports scenario in Gujarat. Under this policy, four new high performance centers for athletes are to be established. These centers are being established mainly for para athletes. Government of Gujarat aims at encouraging and promoting sports culture by organizing national and international tournaments and awarding prizes to all the players through this policy. Tripura government has launched a special scheme named Mukhya Mantri Cha Shramik Kalyan Prakalp. The scheme has been launched for ensuring social security to over 7,000 tea garden workers of Tripura. The scheme assures to provide housing, ration and financial assistance to the tea garden workers with entitlement to state and central government facilities in a club format. The scheme is being implemented with a sum of 85 crore rupees. Chief Minister of Sikkim Shri B.S. Gole has recently announced the Bahini scheme. The scheme will be implemented from the financial year 2022 to 23. It is aimed at providing free sanitary napkins to every girl student studying in class 9 and above. For this purpose, sanitary pad vending machines will be installed in all secondary and higher secondary schools of Sikkim. Sikkim will be the first Indian state to provide free sanitary napkins in all schools. Government of Delhi has recently launched a portal named MyEV. The portal will provide registration and purchase of electric auto-related facilities to the people. Under the Delhi Electric Vehicle Policy, it has been provisioned that if a person takes a loan for purchasing an electric auto, then he or she will get a rebate of 5% on interest. Delhi is the first Indian territory to provide such facilities.